Hi everyone, my name is Martina. I'm Certified Holistic Nutritionist. And in today's video, we're going to be touching a few interesting and good to know points about minerals and vitamins, and in particular, their combinations that are favorable or perhaps not so favorable. I do see very often that people supplement single standing compounds left and right, and uh, not really seeing any improvement or benefits as they expected. And that can have multiple reasons really. But one of them is the combination of various minerals and vitamins that they like with each other or they do not like, right? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, let's talk about the combination that are favorable and that we should be paying attention to when we decide to supplement certain compounds. Let's start with calcium. Calcium is one of the quite often supplemented minerals. And that is because of a dietary lifestyle, right? Vegans in many ways are not getting enough calcium or people can't have dairy or choose not to eat dairy, right? So there can be a multiple reasons why that is so. But if you choose uh, calcium to supplement, always combine them with, uh, with uh, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. Technically speaking, none of these compounds are vitamins really. They are hormones to be frank. But for the ease of the conversation and the habit of the things, I'll refer to them as the vitamins. Uh, you can buy the calcium already uh, combined with D3 and K2. And important for that is the D3 particular, which is a form of vitamin D, is activating calcium. And K2 is sort of with vitamin K and it's produced by gut bacteria, and it's also required for bone health. So the main concern and the reason why the people supplement calcium is indeed skeletal strength and both strength and, uh, and the th teeth and dental uh, problems perhaps. But uh, calcium really does require D3 and K2, in particular D3 that activates the calcium and activates also phosphate, which is also required for the both bone strength and uh, to basically be able to get the calcium into the bone. So that's number one to really be mindful about. The second is iron and vitamin C. Vitamin C is greatly contributing to absorption of iron, especially from the plants. So if you're vegan uh, or even perhaps vegetarian and uh, you might have uh, problems with low iron, first of all, I would advise you to increase the vitamin C intake and see if that doesn't help. A lot of anemic women truly have seen improvements just through this increase in vitamin C. But that is valid particularly from the plants. If you're vegan once again or vegetarian, and uh, do not eat meat, which is a good source of iron as well. And iron in general is better absorbed from animal products than from plants. Uh, then vitamin C is definitely something which you need to pay attention to for better iron absorption. Number three is magnesium and vitamin D. Magnesium activates vitamin D really. And so that yet again, as we have said, activates calcium and phosphate for the bone health. So uh, a lot of people are deficient in uh, vitamin D, but also are deficient in magnesium based on the lifestyle we have, based on the food choices we do, etc. right? But um, we need to activate the vitamin D and that's the magnesium is for. So um, if you take vitamin D as a supplement, now you have to be mindful about your magnesium intake as well. And I do not suggest to supplement magnesium by default, but rather reach out to magnesium rich foods such as sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds or high quality cocoa powder, cashew nuts, almonds. 
These are all wonderful vitamin and magnesium sources abundant, but magnesium is present also with other vegetables, such as leafy greens, right? But um, that is the third combination to pay attention to. Magnesium is activating vitamin D, that is activating calcium and phosphate for the bone health. So you see how uh, everything is connected with everything really in a human body. So this number three. Number four is vitamin A and zinc. Zinc is absolutely necessary for proper functioning of vitamin A. Uh, vitamin A is important for vision, is important part of the immune system, and so is zinc. So uh, the appropriate intake of zinc is, is definitely required for the vitamin A. Zinc is mostly present in dairy. And so a lot of vegans in particular do uh, supplement zinc uh, because they do not eat dairy, right? And the zinc is, is also present in other foods, but most abundantly in, in dairy. So if that is your case, you just, um, or you are vegan and you are not supplementing the zinc uh, and there is problem perhaps with vision or with, with immune system, you might be also willing to check that up, right? Now, magnesium, uh, we've been talking about already, but magnesium does require some other compounds too. And these are particularly vitamin B1 and B6, as well as vitamin E. So um, we've got to pay attention to nutrition all the time. I'm not really a fan of single standing compound supplementation unless there is truly proven reason and severe deficiency, which can't be solved with food because it can happen, right? In that way, uh, supplementation can have sense and is truly meaningful. But since only from this few examples, we've seen how everything is connected with everything really, and everything is influencing something else by default. It is always better to clean up the nutrition, eat the right foods, and supplement B, supplement for a short period of time only when it's necessary, right? But if we do need to supplement, these are the combination which we have mentioned now you need to be mindful of. So what are not so favorable combinations of various supplements or minerals and vitamins we need to be aware of? Let's start with calcium again. Calcium and magnesium, not good to take at the same time if you supplement. They compete with each other pretty much. And so either it's going to be one absorbed in the better way and the other one not. And that is not what we want, right? When we supplement, the ultimate reason is that we are deficient and we want to uh, ramp up our resources to a level that we do not need to supplement anymore, right? So these compounds, magnesium and calcium, compete with each other and should not be taken at the same time. Uh, all which I'm going to be mentioning right now, in case of supplements, you want to make at least two hours window uh, when taking these various compounds. In that way, you ensure that they are not inhibiting each other or working against each other, right? So that's number one. Calcium and iron as well. Um, calcium inhibits the absorption of iron, especially from the plants. Uh, so that is yet again another example where you'd like to, if you need to supplement iron uh, and you're supplementing also calcium, to take them at least two hours apart. So then we have a calcium one. Uh, with iron, uh, it's good to know um, not to combine with green tea. Green tea is also influencing negatively absorption of iron. So uh, drink your green tea uh, later and not together when you are uh, when you just um, taken your iron supplement. Right now, B twelve and vitamin C. I am a huge fan of vitamin C, but sometimes it's just need to be taken with the food or to be considerate, what are you combining vitamin C with? And B12, especially for vegans, this is important to know, 
C, vitamin C is inhibiting the absorption of B12 in digestive system. So yet again, the same rule, no vitamin C with B12. And if you supplement vitamin C as well as B12, at least two hours apart. The final one is, well, I've got two more. Uh, the next one is zinc and copper. As I have mentioned, we've said that zinc is important with vitamin A, uh, but um, if we supplement zinc in the higher doses over a longer period of time, it does inhibit copper. And copper is a trace element, and even we need very tiny amount of copper, it is important and it does play a role. So in case of supplementing zinc, you need to be truly mindful of the quality of the supplement. And first of all, if it's truly necessary to supplement with zinc and uh, also be aware how much is the daily dose of zinc, which is very small, that's 10 to 11 milligrams a day for adults. A lot of time the supplement producers are dosing the, all of the uh, compounds unreasonably high. And more is not better, as I keep on saying all the time, because it's true. And uh, therefore, when you reach out to some supplement, really be aware of the appropriate daily dosing for, for adults and not go overboard because it might have negative effect that you would achieve exactly what you don't want to achieve. So then last but not least is vitamin E and vitamin K, especially K1. Vitamin K1 is responsible for blood clotting. So when we cut ourselves or uh, there is a major wounding that causes the bleeding, it does clot blood so we do not bleed out completely. Now, vitamin E is uh, interfering with these clotting uh, abilities of K1. And so if you do supplement K1, because of the blood, um, then you might be aware and might, must be mindful not to uh, take it together with vitamin E. Now, um, I have mentioned already the dosing and that is truly necessary for all supplements which you're going to buy to be aware what is the proper dosing. Calcium in particular, high doses of calcium in forms of supplements can cause uh, kidney stone creation, right? That's what we do not want. A uh, high doses of magnesium can cause your headache and diarrhea, severe diarrhea even. And that's what we do not want. So always when you reach out to any of the supplements, really make your due diligence and make your research and be aware how much the daily dosing is and, and read the, um, the ingredient list, first of all, and read also how much do you get in one pill. So you do not get really too much, but also not so small amount or such tiny amount that it's quite unreasonable to, to even take such compound, right? So this is, uh, in a nutshell, a few good to know examples for uh, micronutrients, for minerals and vitamins absorption, how can we enhance that with a good combination and achieve the best uh, what we want for our health? And on the other hand, what should be mindful and avoiding to uh, just to achieve the best uh, result which we can. So that's all for now. I hope you uh, found it beneficial and um, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.